Hi, and welcome back to Denver, Colorado in my living room. Today, this is a true orchid supply store video because, as you know, Ken is doing a weekly giveaway for the month of May. Started last Friday, May the 5th, continues throughout the month of May. It's going to be giving away an orchid or orchids to one of you lucky subscribers. So go check that video out. I'll link it down below so you can see how you can enter into that giveaway. Also, if you go to the orchidsupplystore.com and purchase anything, whether it's any of these lovely supplies you see, orchids, pots, they have decorative pots as well. Got some house plants up there. Use coupon code TRISH at checkout and you too shall receive a 12% viewers discount, and that is a multi-use discount. You can go as many times as you like, and there's free shipping in the intercontinental United States. Now, let's see what we're doing. So these lovely fowls here, um, you can look at them. This is not something that Ken can sell, because obviously you do not want to receive anything like this in the mail. So he reached out and said he had some fowls that he couldn't sell and was I interested in, in getting them? And I was like, well, yeah, I love Phalaenopsis. Challenge accepted. So we are going to look at these five fowls here and we are going to mix them into some of this. Now I do have everything out. So I do have the perlite. I have the large Western bark. I have the Rexus medium fur bark. We've got some tree fern that I'm gonna use in lieu of sphagnum moss. I also brought up the charcoal. And as you can see, we have solid clear pots of varying sizes. We've got these pots here, which again, you can get all this at orchidsupplystore.com. Use coupon code TRISH at checkout. But these are slotted. And then I went ahead and grabbed some of the hexagon baskets as well. And I went ahead and grabbed these. Now these are part of a mask that was made for my mother-in-law uh, when she was going through some treatment and they had to make a cast of her face. And I thought maybe we might put one or two kind of not mount, but set in there. I don't know, I have not fully decided on that yet. And then this right here, I'm going to shut the camera off. I'm going to mix the basic mix that I'm going to put in here. And then we will look at each one of these ladies and decide how we're going to pop them up. So while I'm getting this mix together, go grab you a cup of coffee, glass of wine, water, maybe a little snack, because I feel like this is gonna be a little bit of a long one, guys. See you in a minute. All right, hope everybody's got their coffee. In my case, whatever it is you decided to go get, I hope you enjoy. So I wanna start with this big girl right here. So they have been soaking in a CalMag mixture probably about 12 hours. So I think they're good and hydrated and I'm not going to mess with the roots too, too much. So we're gonna take a really good look at her. Give me a second here. Kind of crowded over here. There we go. Move that out the way. I'm hoping by putting these in my face, I remember to use them because I always forget until the end. One we'll see. So this one here, and these are all no IDs. Um, he doesn't know what any of them are called. So it'll be a surprise for all of us if we can get them to rebloom. But she does have a lovely new leaf growing right there. And she does have quite a bit of mechanical damage. Uh, this leaf right here is bent in several places. This leaf is split. We've got a little bit of damage on the tip on this one. You get some of this old leaf sheaths off of here. Give her her best start. Let me see something. Was Nope, I'm a leaf. I was thinking of taking this leaf right here off just because of this blackening right here, but I'm just gonna leave it on there. And she does have some roots on here and any media that's stuck, I'm gonna leave, but I am going to cut off any of the ones that are on, like this one here. Let's see, take this blaming off. So as you can see, this root right here, it's still got a little green left in it. And then we have all of this at the bottom, but I am gonna cut it off because she does have some active roots closer to the bottom and I don't want to put anything in here that does not belong 
So I'm gonna cut these strings off here. And just cut as close to uh, the base as you can. She's got a beautiful active root tip right here at the base. I'll show you guys here in just a second. And let me get this excess off of here. She does have a little moss residual probably from the plug. Take all that off and make sure that doesn't affect the crown. She's got a lot of dead velamen up here at the top. So let's just get as much off as we can. So how is everybody doing? Are you guys working on your repots that you've planned out for this year? Um, for those of you who plan out repots, I know we don't all plan them. Sometimes we like, up. Oh, that needs to be repotted and we just repot. That's kind of how I used to do it. Um, I still do it to an extent, but I'm a little more proactive in going through as I'm looking at my collection and saying, oh, this one is going to need a repot. Matter of fact, the supplies that I'm using were planned to be used for some of my Phalaenopsis that have been in their pots for three years that need to be repotted. But these, I think, take priority. Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you agree? This is kind of like going to one of your big box stores and seeing these on the discount shelf and the orchid lover in you is like, oh, I just cannot leave those on the shelf. I've got to take them home. I've got to save them. It's kind of what this feels like. It felt like Christmas. I was out uh, mowing the yard yesterday and I look up and there's a package on the porch. They must have dropped it off when I went to uh, empty the lawnmower bag of grass because I did not see anyone come up. So this one, pretty good root. And as you can see, we've, oh, we've got some root nubbins coming off of there. So that one will be branching out. Got some lovely branching down here. Let's double check, make sure I got most of it off. And any of the bark right here that's staying on, I'm not even messing with it. It's just going to go in the pot as well. I still feel like I need to take this leaf off because if you look, I don't know, can you see the there's some blackening in there and that's kind of concerning me. So I'm going to go ahead and take it off. Go ahead and take it off. She's got plenty, plenty of leaves on there to help her out. Let's see. There we go. And that'll allow for more root growth as well. And I forgot the hydrogen peroxide. So we're just going to roll with it. I'm not going to put any in there. Now, what are we going to put her in? Let's see. I've got three of the big ones. So let's see. Will she sit in? Maybe this one. Let's try this one because if I remember correctly, the other two don't have quite the root system on them. Let's see if we put her kind of like that. Yep, I think she'll do well in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some large bark that I have in a, I just put the large bark in a bowl by itself and the tree fern by itself because this right here is a basic mix that I would use for any orchid. So if there, if, big word if, if there is any left over, then I can use it for another repot. But this one has the perlite, the Rexus fir bark, and then a little bit of charcoal in there as well. So that is what we have in there. And let's put some of our mycorrhizal fungi and set her up for the best success with that root growth and the health in the pot. And then, hold on. Like I said, I'm a little crowded over here. I'm not used to working with this much stuff on my, my little table here. And let's just... Let those start sanitizing while we are working on this lady here. Ken, if you watch this, I appreciate you sending me these lovely ladies and giving me the opportunity to give them some life. There we are. Okay. Now, well, let me just get that one down. And I'm not going to water these girls simply because, like I said, they've been soaking in that CalMag mix for a good I know 12 hours. Put them in there shortly after I got them yesterday and let them soak. And they've been soaking overnight. They've got lots and lots of energy. Well, I'm going to say energy. Lots and lots of nutrient as far as the CalMag goes. And there was a little bit of seaweed. I'm sorry. It's a uh, hundred parts of CalMag and there was like 10 parts seaweed in there to help kind of encourage that growth. And then what I'm going to do now that I'm kind of close to the crown is 
I'm going to put some of this tree fern in here to help kind of retain some moisture around the base, but it's not going to be right at the base because I am pulling her up just a wee bit to make sure because I don't want any rotting going on there. Leave your predictions below if you think we're going to get these girls to rebloom at any point. Now, normally with our hybrids, their bloom season is in fall and winter sometimes spring but depending on what these ladies have in their parentage they could possibly shoot out a spike at any time of the year really so that'll be interesting to watch as well and i just thought of something now i got to figure out where i'm going to put all these girls but you know what we'll find that space don't you worry about that we'll move things around and rearrange if we have to all right and some of these when i'm putting the pots together i probably will fast forward over it just because y'all seen people put media in a pot and with it being a phalaenopsis i don't have to worry too much about air gaps let's see so she is a little wobbly in there once she gets i'm not going to be moving her for a few days those roots will dry out but i'm gonna do the whole wet dry cycle and if i have to i'll just put a stake right here and on either side of her matter of fact let me go get my bamboo skewers okay hold on i did grab them and I also put the slow release fertilizer in there because I did raise her up a little bit and put a layer of bark on the top of there. Now when you're doing this, you want to be careful not to get into any of the roots. That'll help hold her steady for a little bit until she settles herself in and we can take those stakes out. So there is numero uno. And then let's look at this lady here. Again, nice big girl here with a fairly, what appears to be a decent root system. I have not looked at the roots very carefully. Like I said, I took them out of the box, rinsed them off and put them in there to soak. Now she does have a new leaf as well growing. There was a little bit of damage to it, but I believe it'll continue to grow. And then this one, this root here, even though it looks like a really good root, it's got several kinks in it. So I'm just gonna cut it off. And this one is nice and bright green. So I'm going to guess that her blooms are going to be on the light side, uh, maybe a white, pink, or yellow. And then I'll show you guys her leaves here in just a second. Let me finish cleaning up her roots and then we can see what she looks like. Her stem is pretty long, so that's, that's the length of her stem right there. So she's an older girl. All right, now she does not have, like she, she's got this set right here, kind of long roots, but she doesn't really have a very good root system to start with, but she's got lots of little nubbins right here at the base. And her leaves are not that bad. Um, she does have this one here which I'm just going to cut that off because it's just holding on by the string. And then we have a little bit of mechanical damage here. Let's see. I think that's all she has on her. Well, and she's got a couple of little nicks and stuff on the side, but as far as the, the major mechanical damage. So since it's already kind of separated, I will just cut along the strings. And no need to put cinnamon or anything else on it because it's already dried off. There she goes. Now she looks a little better. Look at her. Let's see. What are we going to put you? And we're going to put you in one of the smaller ones. What did I do with them? I'm going to put you in one of the small clear here. And I'm putting these in these because it'll hold the moisture a little bit longer. It won't allow so much airflow and have it dry out, especially since I'm putting it in brand new bark, which will automatically dry things out. What do you guys think? I think she'll I think she'll be pretty in there. So we're going to set her in there. I'm not putting a large bark in there. I'm just going to put a little bit of media at the bottom. And look at me, two in a row. I wonder if I can do five in a row. Now, if I forget, you guys are going to have to tell me. I know, like you're sitting right here. Okay, let's put her in here. And then we're going to just twist her. And that's a little trick. And I know you guys have probably heard that before as well, that you can kind of twist your orchid into the pot to get her to stay. There we are. All right, and I'll fast forward over this part here and come back as soon as I am done getting the media in here, unless something happens and then I have to stop and tell you something. But other than that, we'll just fast forward over this part. All right, so there she is. And what I did at the end is I put two pieces of large bark. I stuck one of the long ones and then kind of braced it up against 
to help hold her steady to keep her from wobbling around too much because she didn't really need a stake. There she is, and I don't know if you saw it or not. I remembered the fertilizer. And then let's look at the last big girl here. And she's the one that has, I feel like, the most damage and not a very good root system at all. Let's put her down. Y'all love my squeaky chair. I've had this chair forever. Go ahead and let that start soaking. And I do need a little sip of water, so, or I call this water, it's coffee. Go ahead and get you a little drink. So look at this leaf here. Like it is... It's pretty damaged, but we're gonna leave it on there until she develops something else because this one does not have any new leaf growth on it at all. She has the poorest root system out of all three of them. So we will call her number three. I'm going to find something and label them all and we'll just number them until they bloom. Now this looks like a fresh bloom was on here that got cut off. I don't know how long ago, but it's still a little green, so not too, too long ago. Get all this off the base here, and hopefully, maybe with her getting into some fresh media, maybe she'll decide that she's going to go ahead and start pushing out a root. Now with her, I am going to be very particular on what gets cut off and what gets left on. For instance, I'm not cutting off any of the actual root, that's the strings, even if they're dry, because we can use that for anchoring, but I am going to take off all the old layman, just to make sure that we don't put death into the pot right away. Get all this out from the base here, see what we end up with at the end. You know, I used to be so very careful doing this, and then after you, and I used to see people manhandle the orchid, I still don't manhandle them, but I'm not as careful and particular and as I used to be because these guys are pretty resilient. So I, they, they, they need babying, but I think we can be a little rougher on them than what we usually do. All right. I think that's all we're going to do as far as her roots go. We need to put her in a small one as well for now. Maybe in a year we can up pot her, but for now... This is kind of where she's going to have to be. And I'm going to kind of set her kind of right below the rim there. The bottom of the orchid is just going to be right above the rim. I'm not going to put her up too, too high. Let me save some of this. And then move all of this out of the way. And again, I will fast forward over this part because, again, we've just already seen that. I'll be right back. Okay, so there's this one number three you can see she's very wobbly that's why i put these bamboo skewer of course once i set her down and she is not being moved around all the time i think she'll be fine when she gets some roots growing and gets settled in now then let's look at one of the miniatures which might also end up being a medium again not a lot going on with her she look at these roots or the lack thereof. Most of those are going to have to come off, I'm pretty certain. I can't remember if I use those, so we'll just do that. And she has spiked, so there's an old flower spike on there that we're going to take off, along with all this old back sheathing. Now, she does have this beautiful root coming right here, and then she's got this one here coming down, so I have to be real careful as I'm pulling off these sheaths as well. So I don't break any of that. So this is one of those that I'm going to go back to my old ways of being very gentle and careful because of those beautiful roots coming in. Let's see if we can get that flower spike off. Yep, definitely can do that. Oh, she has one way down here too. So again, one with a very long stem, which if she had more roots up here at the top, I could just cut the stem and cut all this off at one time. But as we can see, she does not have a lot going on. So bear with me. Let me fast forward through this cleanup and we'll be back to look and see what we end up with. All right, there we have it. So she does have a little bit of red anthocyanin in the back. So I'm thinking she probably has purple or dark pink maybe, or maybe the white with a pattern in it. That would be cool. So she does also have a new leaf growth growing right here. And as I said, she's got this beautiful root here. And of course this root here, and she's got some nubbins that weren't coming through the hard sheaths of the previous leaves. And she's got a little bit of mechanical damage. I don't know if you can kind of see right there on that leaf. And she's got a little nick here on the new leaf. But overall, this one actually doesn't look that bad as far as the leaves. 
But this is what we're going to leave on for roots. Um, not very good root system. These are these are kind of old and tired. And this one here is questionable. I want to cut it off. You know what I am because the stem itself is no longer there. So we're just going to cut that one off. She does have those new ones coming and she's got, I just noticed, a beginning she tried to do a little root tip there and it is a branching root system so maybe we can get that going again. Now I'm going to put this one in a small in this one here because I don't have any more of the small clear ones. I need to get some more of those this way maybe. Let's see if we get her in there. We can get her down kind of really low and get those roots that are coming in to go into the media. So that's what we're going to do with that one. Be right back and see what we end up with. All right, and there we have number four. And I did put a little bit of tree fern again right at the top for the base. This way, if I do just a little bit of water, it'll wet it a little bit and kind of create some humidity there without having to water the whole pot. But of course, being in fresh bark, it's going to dry out a lot quicker than most. So let's now look at number four. Now this one, um, just at quick glance, is an interesting one. Again, not a lot of roots in here, but what we do have is we have a mother plant. These two leaves right here are the mama plant. And we have one cakey, two cakey. And this one here is growing roots of its own, as is the second one. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take these bottom leaves off so I can put the cakeys deeper in so that they can grow their roots into media. I'm going to leave them together. I'm not going to separate the cakeys themselves, just taking off the leaves of a lay mama. And then let me clean off all of the crown here and I'll be back and we'll see what we've got left. Before we do that, each one of them do have a leaf growing. So there's that one. And then there's that one. Both of the leaves do have some damage on them. And then this one has a little bit of uh, mechanical damage. But overall, the cakeys look pretty good. Very carefully here. Pull these sheaths so we can grow here. And we have a root tip here. We have active root tip there. This looks like this cakey right here. Looks like it bloomed at one point. And that's the cool thing with Phalaenopsis is the babies bloom a lot sooner than if it was just a seedling. Part of the new leaf has been ripped completely off. And then this one here is just kind of split, but they'll continue to grow. And what took me so long is I wanted to make sure and get all of the old leaf sheaths off of here so these two can start growing roots into the pot. Now, ideally what I would like to do is get these into this. Problem is, will it fit? And then in about a month, maybe two months, I can take it out of this and put it into a bigger pot because it will have settled in because really there's no roots for her other than what she is growing. The rest of what I'm keeping on here is keeping on here for, let's see, will she fit in there? Oh yeah, they'll fit in there nicely. Uh, but I think it'll just be, can't get it into that one. So probably have to put it in one of these so that, and then I'll set them both like that. I think that'll look nice. I think so. All right. I will pot them up. We'll be back. And number five. This is the one that I was kind of wanting to put into one of these. So once she gets some roots, I might still maybe separate the ladies and put one on each one, who knows, and then either hang them up or just set them down. But I would like to separate them at some point. But right now, because I don't know who has what roots, I don't want to damage them. So we'll check on them again in about a month and see if we have any roots going in there, what's going on with them. Let me get everything cleaned up and we'll take a last look at them. Be right back. So here is a last look. I was going to clean up, but I have everything out. She needs to be repotted. I'm going to repot her once I'm done. So this is the one that we had to use bamboo skewers on 
fairly decent root system, not great, but fairly decent enough to get her going with her new leaf. Then we've got this one here that does not have a leaf at all growing, very poor root system, pretty damaged up. Out of all of them, this is really the only one that I'm kind of concerned about. I think the rest of them, because they do have all new leaves, these four here, generally new leaves on a phalaenopsis indicates that roots are going to come behind them. And some of you might say I potted them a little bit too deep, but once I um, water and, and it settles down, that will settle down. Not only that, it'll encourage the roots to go straight into the media, similar to Paphiopedilums. Because I don't water here, I usually will water around the edge if I do that. Um, most of the time with new orchids though, I do soak the pots for about 10-15 minutes just because that media dries out so quickly. All right, well, go ahead and leave your predictions. What do you think each one of them is going to look like? Now remember this one does also have a little bit of red tinge. Her leaves are a little bit darker. This one here is the one I'm going to be interested in seeing. I think she's going to be a a cutesy. Everybody have a beautiful day. Don't forget to go to the orchidsupplystore.com and use that coupon code TRISH. Get your repotting done and while you're there grab you an orchid and don't forget about the giveaway. Again, link to the video in the description.